Hello, welcome to my talk on wave energy conversion. This talk is the first part of boundary element method on potential flow theory. In this talk, I will briefly introduce the dynamic equation for marine structures as rigid bodies, and to calculate the forces and the moment acting on the marine structures. We need to find ways to obtain the fluid pressure, which is the only parameter used for calculating the forces and the moment. For doing this, the most popular and acceptable method, the boundary element method based on potential flow theory, will be presented with the focus in this part on the dynamic equations and the relevant boundary conditions for the velocity potential function, and on why and how the decomposition of the potential is made, aiming to provide the sound basic for the boundary element method in wave energy conversion. For the marine structures, their motion can be described using six degrees of freedom motion, C in this picture. And the arrows show the positive motions for each motion mode. The six degrees of freedom motion include three translational motions, the surge, which is the motion along x axis, moving forward and backward. Sway, the motion along y axis, moving to left and right. And the heave motion, the motion along z axis, moving up and down of the structure in waves. There are also three rotational motions. Low motion around x axis. It can be understood to a gesture, say, so so. And the pitch motion, the rotation motion around y axis, similar to the gesture, say yes. And the yaw motion, the rotation around the z axis, equivalent to say, no. For the rigid body motion in waves, the dynamic equation can be given in a form as this for the six degrees of freedom motion. If you would like to know the details, you may find the information in these references or watch my talk on the principle of the wave energy conversion. Here, m is the mass of the structure, calculate as this, and uh, xg, yg, and zg are the coordinates of the center of gravity of the structure, which are calculated using these expressions. And the capital I, here are the moment of inertia. More specifically, the moments of inertia I11, I22, and I33 are also called the principal moment of inertia, calculated using these formulas. And the moments of inertia I11 equaling I21, I13 equaling to I31 and uh, I23 equaling to I32 are called the products of inertia given by this formulation. We can see here that all moments of inertia are with regard to the principal axis, which would be through the center of gravity. This means if we examine the motion on the reference point, 
that is the origin of the coordinate other than the center of gravity G, the mass matrix would be different due to the coordinates of the center of gravity xg, yg, and zg. But the moment of the inertia should be same because they are always calculated with regard to the principal axis. For serving the dynamics of the wave energy converter, the most important thing is how we can calculate the force and the moment in here. For the wave structure interactions, it is well known the forces and the moment acting on the structures can be calculated as the pressure integrals on the wet surface Sb, given as these formulas for the force vector F and the moment vector M respectively. Here, P is the fluid pressure on the structure surfaces, and the vector N is the normal vector of the structure surfaces, and the vector R is the vector from the reference point to the structure surface, ds here. Now, if we extend the normal vector on the body surface to an extended normal vector of six components. The first three components are the same as those in the normal vector m1, n2, and uh, n3, and the last three components defined as this. So we have the extended normal vector as n i here. Accordingly, the force expression can be simply written as this, a same form as those conventional force vector f i. But here, the index i is from one to six, and the force vector of six components fi can be expressed as this and in detail the components would be as this to calculate the force acting on the floating structure as we have shown in the previous slide the key is to find out the fluid pressure p in principle, we may have different ways to obtain the fluid pressure, basically from the Navier-Stokes equation. Here, the Navier-Stokes equation for the incompressible flow, the continuity equation given in this, and the moment equations are given in here. From the form of the Navier-Stokes equation, Though they are complicated, these equations could form a perfect dynamic system from the mathematical point of view. Here, we have four partial differential equations, one from the continuity equation, and three from the momentum equations for three velocity components. And in the equations, there are also four unknowns to be served, three velocity components for the velocity vector and the pressure. And here for the incompressible water, which can be regarded as um, Newtonian fluid, its density no and uh, climatic viscosity new would be constant. Therefore, the Navier-Stokes equation form a perfect dynamic system. However, the question is how we can solve the Navier-Stokes equation. 
especially for the practical applications, which are very complicated and difficult, since the Navier-Stokes equation are the partial differential equations. They are nonlinear differential equations, and the practical flows involves in the turbulence with the eddies from large to very small scale, the Kolmogorov length scale. Therefore, currently, we have a real big question in turbulence modeling in CFT, although there are some success in the relatively simple flows. And for the wave energy conversion, we may also have a difficulty here. The pressure is normally given in the total pressure if we solve the Navier-Stokes equation directly. But in reality, we may need to distinguish the pressure into the different parts. For instance, the parts corresponding to the wave radiation due to the structure motion. In addition, the free surface problem would add some more difficulties in the conventional CFD modeling in both computational time and the multi-phase problem. The most popular method for solving the fluid pressure in wave structure interaction would be the boundary element method based on the potential flow theory. In my opinion, this method currently is the most reliable and the best method with rather small computation demand but with the acceptable accuracy in most applications. For potential flows, there are three assumptions. The most important assumption is the flow is assumed to be irrotational, and this assumption is generally acceptable for most wave structure interaction problems since the corresponding Reynolds number is very large. The second assumption is the incompressible flow. This is an assumption which is actually true for most practical applications, since the flow velocity in wave structure interaction is small. The third assumption is the inviscid flow which can be generally acceptable when the flow is away from the boundaries. In fact, if the first two assumptions are made, then the third assumption for the inviscid flow might not be necessary. However, as I have done by most researchers, there is no harm to assume the flow is an inviscid flow for the potential flow. For an irrotational flow due to its zero velocity vector core, there must exist a velocity potential function phi, and the velocity vector can be given as the gradient of the velocity potential function as vector v equals to nabla phi. And if we doing so, we can ensure the core of the fluid velocity vector v would be zero. This is the reason why there will be a velocity potential function phi for the irrotational flow. The second assumption is the incompressible flow. If we substitute the velocity vector using the gradient of the potential function, phi, the continuity equation can be expressed as this. Therefore, for an incompressible irrotational flow, its velocity potential function, phi, would satisfy the Laplace equation. 
Obviously, this is a rather simple linear second order partial differential equation. And for the rotational flows, the general unsteady Bernoulli's equation would be given in a form as this. Here, P0 is the atmospheric pressure at the water surface. And we can also see there is a nonlinear term of the dynamic pressure, which is proportional to the fluid velocity squared. However, for the problem of the wave structure interaction, the fluid velocity is generally small. Thus, the nonlinear dynamic pressure can be small and be neglected. As such, the Bernoulli's equation can be linearized as this. We can see a comparison of the linear and the nonlinear dynamic pressure in my talk on wave characteristics. And we can see the nonlinear dynamic pressure is generally an order smaller than that of the first order dynamic pressure. This is very different from that in the aerodynamics, where the air velocity is very large, and the long linear dynamic pressure is most important. So in the boundary element method for wave structure interaction, this linearized Bernoulli equation would be used. For serving the Laplace equation for the velocity potential function phi, we must specify the relevant boundary conditions. These boundary conditions are very important since these boundary conditions are used to determine the actual potential function for the specific problem. Generally, we have three boundary conditions, the seabed boundary condition given as this. This boundary condition is a long penetration boundary condition, meaning there is no normal velocity of the fluid at the seabed, that is, no fluid penetrating into the seabed. The body surface condition given as this here, the vector Vs is the velocity of the structure surface. This condition means the normal velocity of the fluid on the structure surface is the same as the normal velocity of the structure surface. Again, this is the non-penetration condition. And for the free surface, we have the climatic free surface condition given in this form and the dynamic boundary condition given in this. So if we put these two boundary conditions together, we obtain an equation for the free surface as this. Here, we summarize the dynamic equation and the relevant boundary conditions for the velocity potential function phi. The dynamic equation is the simple Laplace equation given as this. This is a linear partial differential equation. And the boundary conditions, including the seabed boundary condition, the body surface boundary condition and the linearized free surface boundary condition. From these expressions, we can see all this linear dynamic equation and the linear boundary conditions could form a four linear dynamic system. And for simplifying the problem for such a for linear dynamic system, we can employ the superposition method 
For instance, we can separate the potential function phi into two parts, phi1 and phi2, and we will see how we can construct the dynamic equation and the boundary conditions for the potential phi1 and phi2. First, we can construct two Laplace equations for phi1 and phi2 as this. And if we add these two equations together, we have this expression, which would be exactly the same as that original Laplace equation as this. For the seabed condition, we can construct the boundary conditions for both phi1 and phi2 as this. Similarly, we can add them together, so we have this expression, which is the same as the original seabed condition. For the body surface condition, we can separate the boundary condition as this phi1 given as this, and phi2 is given as this. Both are on body surface SB. So if we add these two boundary conditions together, we have the expression as this. And this is exactly the same as the original body surface condition. For the free surface condition, we can construct the equations for phi1 and phi2 respectively as this. And if we add them together, we have the equation as this. And this and this as well. So this part would be exactly the same as the original free surface boundary condition. Therefore, we can see for the four linear dynamic system, we can decompose the potential into different parts. And all these decomposed parts would satisfy the Laplace equation and the relevant boundary condition. We may not see any advantages from this example, since this is used only for an illustration of the superposition principle. And we will see this superposition principle would be very useful for studying the problem of the wave structure interaction. It should be mentioned that the superposition principle is only valid for linear dynamic system. It's not valid for nonlinear dynamic system, unless the nonlinear dynamic system can be approximately linearized. So based on the superposition principle as shown in the previous slide, and for simplification of the dynamic problem, the velocity potential can be decomposed into following parts expressed in this form. Phi zero is the velocity potential for the incoming wave, and this velocity potential should be known when the wave amplitude and the frequency are given. The velocity for the diffracted wave phi 7, due to the existence of the floating body, we will see the diffracted wave means the structure diffracts a wave when it is stationary, and the velocity potentials due to the structure motion, the 6 degrees of freedom motion, here i equaling to 1 to 6 corresponds to 6 degrees of freedom motion. Phi i is defined as the velocity potential of unit velocity of the structure motion. 
This decomposition would simplify the problem of the wave structure interaction. The incoming and the deflected wave are for the stationary structure. So to separate the structure motion out of the interaction problem, the radiation problem is only for the motion of the structure, which would radiate a wave or way in the calm water. Thus, the radiation problem would separate the incoming and the the diffracted waves out of the interaction problem, and all these potentials together form a four dynamic system. And、uh, in the next few slides, we will see how this decomposed problem can be implemented. The first potential is for incoming wave phi zero. This potential would satisfy the Laplace equation at this. The seabed condition at this. Again, this is a no penetration condition, and the free surface condition given at this. Here we don't have the body surface condition because the wave would exist with and without the floating structure. And the existence of the floating body means the superposition of the deflected and radiated wave to the incoming wave from the mathematic point of view. The incoming wave potential would be known if the wave amplitude and the frequency are given. I have talked about the. How we can obtain the incoming wave potential in my talk, linear wave theory. The incoming wave potential function is given as this. Here, a is the wave amplitude, omega is the wave frequency, h is the water depth. And the beta is the wave instant angle, as shown in the figure here. K is the wave number decided by the dispersion relation given in this equation. Obviously, the dispersion relation is a nonlinear equation, and it can be solved using an iteration method or using the approximation method. The deflected wave is due to the existence of the floating structure, which is under the assumption for the stationary structure on the sea. As such, the incoming wave would be deflected when it reaches the structure. We can imagine an extreme case: a vertical wall, which would. Deflect all incoming wave back to the sea. In the normal case, the deflected wave would be in 3D directions. The potential for the deflected wave would satisfy the Laplace equation as this, and the seabed and the free surface condition given as this. In constructing the deflected wave potential. The body surface condition is given as this. The normal velocity of the combined the potential of incoming wave and deflected wave would be zero on the body. This condition means the body surface has no normal velocity. That is, the structure is stationary. Hence, the diffraction problem. Is for the stationary structure, and for the diffracted wave, its potential in far field would disappear, given in this far field condition, following the reference. The potentials for the radiated waves is constructed to be independent of the incoming wave. And the deflected wave, 
but due to the motion of the structure, it would radiate the wave away. Hence, the potentials satisfy the Laplace equation. Load here i equals one to six, meaning there will be six potentials for corresponding to the six degrees freedom motion. The seabed and free surface boundary conditions are given as this. This are same as those for the incoming and the diffracted wave. The important issue here is to construct the body surface conditions for the potentials of radiated waves, which is given as this. This condition can be understood. The potential is caused by the unit normal velocity of the structure motion, and this relation can be derived from this relation. Here, C i is the structure motion, and its differentiation with regard to time is the velocity. And uh, the far field condition is given as this. Basically, this can be understood. The radiated wave will disappear in the far field.